Thank you for watching this DPL tutorial video series. In this series of six videos, I will show you the steps to creating a probabilistic Excel spreadsheet link decision model in DPL Professional. Often one of the initial steps in creating a probabilistic model is to perform a sensitivity analysis in order to understand which variables in the model are the biggest drivers of value. For our model, which contains only value nodes, a value tornado is the appropriate form of sensitivity analysis. This is the default tornado type indicated by the tornado button within the home sensitivity group. When I click the button, the value tornado setup dialog provides a table in which to enter low and high settings for each value node that is not a formula. The middle column shows the current setting for each variable. I'm going to supply the low and high values as follows. To produce a value tornado diagram, DPL will run the model once to establish the base result, which is displayed as a vertical line in the diagram. Then it runs the model twice for each variable in the value tornado, once using the specified low value for the variable and once using the specified high value. The width of the bar for the variable is the difference in the expected value of MPV between these two runs. Variables with the biggest impact have the widest bar and are at the top of the diagram. As you can see from this tornado, market size and market share have the most impact on MPV, followed by gross margin, marketing costs, and launch costs. These results will help chart the direction of the analysis by telling me which variables I should consider more carefully. The exact value of these critical variables is uncertain, so I'm going to model them probabilistically by changing them from value nodes to discrete chance nodes. A DPL discrete chance node has two or more outcomes which occur with specified probabilities. DPL evaluates each chance outcome to calculate the expected value of the model by evaluating the decision tree. I'll first change the type of a single node for example's sake, and then we'll change the rest all at once. Currently, I'm still viewing the tornado diagram output. To activate the model, I'll double click its item within the Workspace Manager. To change a single node's type within the Influence Diagram, I'm going to first select the node, in this case Launch Costs, and then I will navigate to the Influence Diagram tab where I'll drop down the Change Type of Node Split button and select Discrete Chance node from the list. This will bring up the General tab of the Node Definition dialog. Here you can edit the node and outcome names. By default, DPL named the three outcomes to be Low, Nominal, and High. I'll click on the Data tab to view the default probabilities and values that were assigned to the node. DPL has provided default probabilities of 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.3 for the three outcome uncertainty, and supplied the low and high outcome values that I specified when creating the value tornado. I'll click OK to accept these default values. There are four more variables that were at the top of the tornado diagram that I'd like to change. I will select all four of these nodes at once by holding the Control key and clicking each one. Once selected, I'm going to click the top part of the Change Type of Node button, as a default updated to the last command selected. Now the five variables with the biggest impact on my objective function are being modeled probabilistically. I'll click in white space to deselect the nodes. Now that I've introduced uncertainty to the model, there is something to look at in the decision tree. I'll press the Tab key to quickly switch over to the decision tree pane. DPL has been building this symmetric default tree for me as I modeled in the Influence Diagram. It has been minimized and therefore hidden from view up to this point. Where the influence diagram depicts the main factors of the decision and their relationships, the decision tree specifies the order and structure of events in the model. Currently, the decision tree has only uncertainties in it. More specifically, it has five three-outcome discrete chance nodes. Therefore, this decision tree has three to the five or 243 possible scenarios or paths in it. DPL has identified NPV as the metric and therefore added the variable as a get pay expression on the branches of the last node in the tree. Get pay expressions tell DPL when and how to calculate the value model. So during a decision analysis, DPL will calculate the expected NPV for each of the scenarios in the tree. I'll press the tab key to switch back to the influence diagram pane where I'll be making further edits to the model. I'm also going to go ahead and save my model. This is the conclusion of the third video. You can click the information link indicated by the eye in the top right corner of this video pane to request a free 21-day trial license of DPL9 Professional. A link to the Broadsword Pro Excel file is available on the trial download page. Feel free to work through the tutorials as you watch. 
In the next video, I will be adding a decision to the model and running a decision analysis in order to generate DPL's basic outputs, the risk profile and policy tree.